The year after, in 2019, we went to about 600 tickets sold. Constant improvement. Did we make mistakes there? Yes. We had some great speakers, but we could have done a lot better. But it's always constantly improving and not saying, oh, I, I failed. I'm going to quit. We are constantly trying to get better. everybody, Jake and Gino here. And today we're going to break down something important to us and we're calling it. So you're thinking about hosting a live event. Now what? Now let's take a trip down memory lane. Gino and I started out with our first live event in 2017. Okay. It was called multifamily mastery one. We might've had 170 people there, including team members and everybody. A lot of free tickets were given out to that event. You know, we had some that you know, we're, we're paid for, but it wasn't like it is today. And now this has become our flagship event. We've scaled it to over 1,200 tickets sold in 2022. Uh, today, we're going to cover how we scaled, you know, what we think of live events and some of the learning lessons slash inflection points that we've learned over the years. So Gino, so Mr. I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, everything, Gino, Gino. What are the keys to scaling and growing a live event? I'd like to take the Gino. listeners. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to take the listeners down uh, down memory lane with me. In 2017, first thing I'd like to say is think big but start small. And Jake and I, 170 people, that was overwhelming. And for me This is all credit to you though. I'm cutting you off right now because I pushed you on the book, I pushed you on the podcast, but you sir Pushed me on the live event way out of my comfort zone, way out of my comfort well, zone. I didn't know what we were doing at the time. And I said, you know, we didn't know we had no idea. <laughs> what's the worst thing that can happen? Just start Think yeah. big, think thousands of people, but start small and 170 people for us. I was so nervous at the first event that I didn't even invite my family to come. My wife <laughs> sent them to Disney, then my kids at Disney. And I came to Jake. I remember taking a shower. You know, never books a Disney trip until he's like, I got it. I can't have him show up. <laughs> hey, we're going to Disney this weekend. Oh, I can't make it. <laughs> I'm sitting at Jake's house in the morning, getting the shower. There's no hot water. Uncle Sean at the time thought he used all the hot water. It didn't happen. I had we didn't have any hot water. No, I didn't have hot water. I, I took a shower with freezing cold water. Oh, I guess bro, we got a good another thing. water heater on the other side of the house. You could have no, went. not in seventeen, bro. So if it didn't work. It wasn't working, bro. Oh yeah. shit! Yeah, it's okay. okay. I I, right. I remember the stink things. I remember I was sitting there in the morning by myself, going, "I can't believe I didn't invite my wife." Folks, since then we've replaced that water heater. I promise you that. <laughs> I can attest that I've been to this house several times since then, we multiple times. And I sit there and I can't, I'm like, okay, just start everybody. Just pick a number and, and try, like Jake says, lead with value. I think that's the first thing. Like all we wanted to do at this event was get as many people there, get as many speakers there, provide value with cost segregation, with our insurance vendor, with our accountant, with our mortgage broker, with that Jake and myself sharing a story. It was awesome. It was a great event. It was like five pounds of shit in a three pound bag. We stuffed it in there. We got it going, but it was great. Lead with value. That's the first thing. Think about providing value to the people coming to the event. Don't think about how much money you're going to make or what you're going to get out of it. Think about what you can provide to the person coming to that event. And gang, the importance is having a medium. Okay. So we had the podcast already, which was a really good thing. We had a little bit of social media out there. So people knew about us. We had the book out there at the time. So I think the key is you have to have a way that you're going to reach people. So whether it's a, a social media platform, maybe you do YouTube, maybe you do you know some videos from time to time or a podcast, whatever the case may be, but that's the importance of brand over the long term. You need to, if look, if you want to be relevant in your entrepreneurial ventures, you have to start to create a brand so people can know you, they can know where to find you. And also you can reach them if you want to do things such as a live event, if you want to launch a book, whatever the case may be, it's very important. Now, Gino, the next thing I'd like you to touch on is what can live events, uh, live events be used for? What are the goals? Because at the time we didn't really, and this is guys, I'm going to tell you this, I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself because we started Jake and Gino didn't really have a huge goal in mind. We did a podcast, did a book, did the live events. There's never been some huge overarching goal other than we're enjoying what we're doing. We're sharing our journey. We're giving back and we're leading with value. But 
Gino, unlock a little bit what can be achieved from live events and why people may want to do them. Let me, before I answer that question, it's yeah. really important. You had this other thing you wanted to talk about with constant improvement. Yes. And Jake likes the term when I, when I mentioned the term by Dr. Ben Hardy. We, we interviewed Dr. Ben Hardy in the Jake and Gino show. Go listen to the interview because it was about the gap in the game. There's a term in there called the investment of loss. You're going to suck. So after MM1, we sucked a little bit, but it was all about constant improvement and knowing that you may take a step back to take two steps forward. After MM1, so one of the one of the attendees comes up and goes, "Hey, I do an event planning company. I can help you with MM2 setting it up." We actually had somebody help us do MM2, Multifamily Mastery 2 in 2018. We had about 400 people attendees at that event. Mind blowing. We more than 2x the first one, but it was constantly improving. And did we make mistakes at and Multifamily Mastery 2? Absolutely. Yeah, but it went from an event to a conference. I mean, it was night and day difference and double the size, double the, you know, the quality, you know, a, a plus uh, accommodations. I mean, it was, it was night and day and in we Nashville we, is beautiful. Yeah. And then in M3, the year after in 2019, we went to about 600 tickets sold constant improvement. Did we make mistakes there? Yes. We had some great speakers, but we could have done a lot better, but it's always constantly improving and not saying, Oh, I, I failed. I'm going to quit. We are constantly trying to get better. But to Jake's question, hold on, you don't don't stop there, and we'll get to the question in a minute. Woo. Now talk about talk about MM five and, and the difference between you know MM five and MM three, MM four, MM one. I mean, night and day already. Before we haven't even done the event yet. So MM four, another big investment in the event. We had some great speakers, eight hundred and fifty to nine hundred tickets sold. I think we had nine hundred tickets sold. And it was just great last year. I had so much fun with yeah. you. We provided so much value. We expanded the Jake and Gino community. This year at MM5, we're sitting at around 1,200 tickets sold at an event where there's a recession going on right now. There's been dozens and dozens of conferences this year, and people are selecting and choosing to come to ours. Why? Because we're vertically integrated. We're in the business. We provide a ton of value. Julius Thomas, two-time Pro Bowler, talking about mastery. Ryan Serhant, million-dollar listing agent. He's actually got the highest listed home on the market right now, talking about branding. We have Luke Wren, who's a motivational, inspiring, amazing, you know, Tony Robbins, speaker trainer they're all being there we have our entire team where we actually had Dude, you got a vanilla ice concert on saturday night it's created this magnet whereas before we were trying to bootstrap it with some of the guests that we had in the podcast and now it's become this magnet for high level entrepreneurs so it's just it's it's changed the game but it's taken look we skipped 2020 uh, because of all the stuff that was going on but now it's six years into it and this is full-fledged the premier multifamily conference in the space so i don't want people to say oh wow i'm living as Dr. Hardy says in the, in the gap, I'm comparing myself to Jake and Gino. They got 1200 people live in the game by saying, Hey, Jake and Gino started with, you know, 175 people, mostly free tickets, friends and family. So what they have right now, there's been a lot of work. So appreciate mm -hmm. the, 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 the travel, the hustle, walking upside the mountain. That's, what's really important. And for us, it's just thinking big. And it's the same thing with our real estate portfolio. We started out with a small 25 unit property by the third deal. We had 136 unit deal. We took down, but think big and start small. And I think that's the same thing when you're doing these, these live events, these meetups, and it's the Jake's previous question. What are you trying to get out of it? First thing is you want to be an authority in your space. If you're the recognized authority and you're able to posture up or position yourself with a real estate broker, with a mortgage broker, with a seller and say, hey, I've got a portfolio. I understand. By the way, I'm on YouTube. I've written a book. All of a sudden, you're an authority leader and get people to come to your events. You become a better public speaker. You become a much better communicator. And, and, I've, and I think ultimately you become a much better educator. So when you learn and you do, when you start teaching, you become a better investor. And that's what these events have, have allowed Jake and myself to do. Because we sit down, we create stories, we create content, and then we reflect and go, okay, we were buying deals back then like this. What have we learned? Well, we've learned the three pillars of real estate, the spy technique, the conveyor belt. I mean, we create multifamily entrepreneurs, all of these different things that we've learned throughout these conferences. We've had to work. And we've had to really plan for these events. And when you plan something, you put amount of effort into it. You actually, you know, learn, you're learning a lot of stuff while you're doing it. Yeah. I think you're, you're learning regardless. Every time you do an event, you're learning about the event, but then you're learning things while you go there. You're networking, you're partnering with people, you're investing. Uh, and look, you may be a syndicator, maybe a great way to get people around, offer value, but then find opportunities for folks to start to invest together, uh, grow your investment community. Um, and who knows what comes from it. Every time you bring people together that are like-minded with uh, similar values, 
in my experience, good things happen. And that's, that's the key, getting out of your comfort zone. And I'll, I'll close with this because here's the deal. The, 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 this is, the, this is the, the trip up, the, oh, what about that kind of moment? These things are not cheap. And that's the key. So you, you got to make sure you're planning properly. But I will say this, our first event, we bootstrapped the hell out of it. And it was extremely affordable considering. It was a big expense to me at the time. It was, you know, 10 times less expensive than what it, they're costing us now. Uh, but, you know, everyone's been worth it. Uh, but I will say this, every time you put one of these on and you put on a first class event, it's like planning a wedding. I think that's the, the best way I can do it. So if you're, uh, you've been married before, this is what you're getting into. Uh, so to be very clear. So Gino, final words. You know, you talk about building a brand. And I think this is what ultimately we are all a, a unique brand. We all have unique skill sets. We all have unique messages. Go out there and try to create the brand. But what is this event all about? I mean, are you out there really raising capital? Are you out there uh, just wanting to provide value for somebody? Are you out there because you want to be an expert? If Jake and I started these events because we just wanted to learn. We just wanted to meet other people in the space and ultimately took on our uh, uh, maybe you want to create a deal sharing opportunity where people bring deals to the table. They share the deals that they have and, and you find opportunities to invest. There's a million different things you can do. I think right. that's the importance of it. And maybe, so, you dang, want to be, maybe you want to be a connector as well. So just think about what you're yeah. trying to achieve with it. What's the ultimate goal. And then just ultimately think big, think you want to have a million people come to this thing, but just start small, get five yeah. or six or 10 people in a room. And then the next one's going to be 12 and the next one's going to be 15. The next one's going to be 50, then a hundred. It will continue to grow as long as you put effort and energy into it. But you got to commit for the long term. So what do we say, gang? As always, we believe in buying deals for the long term, thinking decades. I'm Jake, that's Skull Bunny over there, the G Daddy with the nice red shirt. And we make it happen. We'll see you at MM5. family, this is where you need to be. The team you've built is incredible. There is no egos here. Everyone is always looking to help the other person.